Hi all, welcome to another video on Power Apps. In this video, we will see how to implement timer control in Power Apps. Timer control in Power Apps offers some handy features which can be used in unison with various features to complete the business flow of the app. There can be situations where we need to change the property of a control based on the time elapsed after a specific activity, use the countdown of the timer to wait for and trigger an action or even implement some cool looking mark you animations or flyout menus. In this video we will see how we can make use of timer control to automatically navigate across screens. So the scenario that we will be using is that you can see that we have a medicine inventory app here. We will be having uh, multiple screens in the inventory app as we can see there is a uh, admin view where we can see like there are outgoing stock incoming stock weekly report and stock analysis and clicking on incoming stock it will actually take us to the incoming stock view which will have few fields that can be used by the user to input data and then save that to the backend now once the user clicks on save stock it has to save the data to the backend and at the same time navigate to a success screen which shows them that the save has been successful and after a five second delay it has to navigate back to the home screen that is the admin view where the user can again do some other operations now as we can see the navigation between the incoming stock view to the success screen and then from there back to the home screen has to be done automatically now we will be making use of timer control to implement this automatic navigation between the screens. So as the first step, let's add a new success screen which we can select from the new screen and there's a template for a success screen. And it also shows a confirmation text. Now we will just edit the success screen text message to something more meaningful uh, with respect to our app. And we'll just reduce the screen size. And we will also make sure that we have a different color so that it looks aesthetically a bit more better right now we will just change the color of the text so that it becomes a bit more readable cool we have updated the screen to show some message regarding the success of the safe of the app and we will be using this screen as the success screen for the medicine inventory app. Now, within the same screen, we will also add a timer control, which will be present in the input section. So we'll just add a timer control, which we will be using to control the automatic navigation between screens. And as you can see, the timer control has been added here. And um, yeah, we'll just rename the screen as well once. And to success and we will rename the timer as navigation timer the timer has different properties which we will be making use of and one of the few properties that we will be making use of in this demo is the one of them is the duration which has 60,000 milliseconds as the default value but uh, we won't be using that value because we want to do the automatic navigation after a five second delay, which means it is 5,000 milliseconds. So we'll just update the duration to 5,000. So duration indicates like how many, once the timer starts for how long it will run. That is the duration window that is being indicated by the duration property. Now there is also another property which we'll be making use of is the start property. And by default, start is set to false. Now, if you want the timer to run, you have to set this to true, which means you can initiate or set this value to a true using a variable by changing the value of, value of that variable from elsewhere as well. You don't have to manually come here and update the value from false to true. Now, in order to achieve that, we will change the false to a variable name and control that variable's name from elsewhere. That is what we are going to do. In that fashion, once the variable's value is changed to true, the timer will start to run. It will run for the 5000 milliseconds, that is 5 seconds, which we have de defined in the duration property. Now, what happens after the duration of 5 seconds is completed? Now, that behavior is defined by on timer end property. So if you can see on timer and there is a false value, but 
what we need to do is we need to navigate back to the home page when the timer has run to completion now to do that we will set a navigation so expression here so that on the at the end of the five second run the timer will automatically navigate the entire screen to the home screen so that is the entire process that we are going to achieve in this demo so let's head to the incoming stock view from where we will initiate the first navigation so in the save stock we can see that there is a patch expression already placed now it updates the medicine inventory SharePoint list with the values from the uh, text fields that is there in the screen. Now once the patch has been completed, what we will do is we will add a navigate um, function so that it navigates to the success screen. And followed by that, we will also set a variable which is called the start timer and we will set it to true. This means we will be using this variable to control the starting of the timer control in the success screen. This completes the expression that we have to add in the incoming stock view screen. Now, we will navigate back to the success screen and make some few changes there. So, the first things to do is we have to update the start property of the timer control to the variable that we have declared in the previous screen, which is called the start timer. So we will just head over to the start property and we will set the value as start timer. You can see the variable is now coming up here. We will just select it to start timer. Now the next update that we need to make is we will have to update the on timer end property of the timer control. So we will just search for the on timer end and we will set a navigation here. So we will add the navigation to the home screen which is in the screen admin view and we can also add a screen transition it can be a fade transition followed by that we will also set the timer value to false so we'll just uh, use a set function to set the start timer value to false so that it will not run again and it can be retriggered by setting it to true from the uh, incoming stock view. Okay. There is an issue. It's not navigation. It's navigate. So this way we have completed the navigation to the back to the home screen and we have also reset the timer control so that we can reuse it again if needed. Thus we have completed the setting up of the navigation between the screens using the timer control. Now let's test the app by playing it from the preview. Now we'll just click on incoming stock and I will just add some data to the uh, incoming stock view. And I will just add the data as well. And I will just click on save stock, which has taken me to the timer control, uh, to the success screen, where we can see the timer control was running actually. Now, we did see that it navigate back from the uh, success screen to the home home screen after running for a couple of seconds because it has run for five seconds and after the completion of five seconds the navigation happened if you want we can increase the timer control value so that we can see or even read even a lengthier text and do the redirection after say even six or seven seconds if you want to increase it and we'll just want do one more update. That is, uh, we will ensure that we are setting the visibility to false so that it doesn't appear to the end user. So we will just set the visible to false. And also we will just add the duration probably to a lengthier duration. We'll just put it to eight seconds and then we will run it once again. And let's do a save once again. You can see the uh, timer control is not visible now. And after a duration of eight seconds, it will do the navigation back to the home screen. And this time we can see the fade as well properly. Last time it was a bit quick. So this is how we have completed the demo for navigation between the screens within Power App using timer control. Now, we'll come up with more of such uh, handy use cases in Power App implementation in the coming videos. 
and in case you need to have a specific video that you would like to actually see the implementation regarding the implementation in power app please do note it down in the comments and we will see how we can implement that in the upcoming videos so thanks all for your time thanks for watching